um, all kinds of other physical evidence. There have been found in the dust samples from the collapses uh, microspheres, tiny spheres of formerly liquid metal. Um, no explanation for that in the official story. Um, again, the fires were not hot enough to melt steel, and that's conceded. Um, there's a, a group of architects and engineers that now numbers over 700 licensed architects and engineers throughout the country. Um, and um, they point out a number of problems in addition to what I've mentioned. The collapses themselves were too symmetrical. Um, the damage done by the aircraft were not, was not symmetrical. And so they say it's impossible that floor by floor everything could have gone down the same way. Um, and then there was no precedent for um, steel framed high rise structures to collapse by fire. It just doesn't happen. The designers of the towers um, all have said before and after 9-11 that the buildings were built to withstand the impacts of aircraft uh, carrying full loads of fuel. And um, if you look at the weight of the aircraft that existed in 1970 when the buildings were designed versus the weight that exists now, the airliners that struck the buildings were not materially heavier, and they were flying less slowly than the maximum airspeed of the, of the aircraft in 1970. So um, the energy wasn't greater from these impacts. The, the building should have stood. I mean, I could go on and on endlessly. The point is there's a long list of physical problems with the collapses. And um, if you actually dig into the reports of the government investigations, you find just endless inconsistencies and impossibilities. I'll just give you one example. In the, um, I believe it was the FEMA report on the collapses of the Twin Towers, um, they, they set up computer models to try to model how the buildings fell. And the computer models indicated that the buildings should not have fallen. For example, they calculated that a certain number of core columns had to have been severed by the impacts of the crash for a crash, for a collapse to have even started. And yet they admit that the only part of the aircraft that would have been heavy enough to sever a column upon impact would have been the engines. And then you subtract out the engines that flew through the building and landed on the street, and you don't have enough engines to sever enough columns to get the buildings to fall. This is all stuff right from the government reports. I'm not making it up. And yet we don't hear about it because the media doesn't talk about it. The fact of the matter is the official reports of the collapses don't explain the collapses. For me, it's, uh, it's Building 7, uh, that building that wasn't even hit by an airplane. Charles is here. Uh, it's a good stopping point when he says, don't explain the facts in terms of a cut. OK. So why don't we move Charles in? OK. And, and then you can. Uh, Jim, can you balance the background a little bit more so that the, uh, the monument and the statue are in the middle? Okay, we're rolling. Well, we have a new, uh, a new arrival. Um, Charles Simpson is here. Uh, Charles is a professor of sociology at SUNY in uh, Plattsburgh. Uh, Charles, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. Um, <clears throat> my original work dealt with Lower Manhattan, uh, particularly the development of uh, the Soho District and the, uh, um, in the context of the uh, Lower Manhattan redevelopment that was promoted by the uh, the banks in that region. So I have some familiarity with the, with the area, and particularly the, the construction of the World Trade Center towers, although my work hasn't uh, specifically addressed 9-11 or the uh, uh, events associated with that, with that day. Um, I'm a community sociologist uh, dealing with uh, cities and uh, community dynamics. Um, so I, I, the, I guess one of the points I would like to make is the um, tremendous structural integrity of the towers uh, that were uh, taken down in 9-11-2001. And they were, it's important to realize that, that this was a, 
a tremendously overbuilt structure. Um, it had reserve capacities, perhaps in the perimeter at least, of about 10 to 1. That is to say, the, the structural integrity of the, of the building was such that it could support 10 times the weight that it was supporting on a normal day. And the reason for this is the uh, tremendous wind velocities that had to be accounted for in, a build, in buildings of this size. And, of course, the, on the day of 9-11, there was no wind, so we, we had the, this capacity was still in reserve. Um, so these were buildings which operated in a um, kind of a symbiotic network. Uh, the outer perimeter uh, um, being uh, connected to an inner core of extremely large um, beams, up to seven inches thick in steel, uh, perhaps 53 inches uh, on, on a side at the, at the base. And then the whole thing strung together at each floor with trusses and four inches of concrete uh, welded and uh, pinned together. So the whole thing operated really um, as a network. And so that um, when we try and understand why or how the, the, the buildings collapsed, we need to understand that it's, it's, it's a challenge to, to figure this out. And it was certainly a challenge that the, uh, the NIST, the National Institute for Technology and, and Standards, um, was really not uh, credible in, in explaining. Um, so that's kind of what I'd like to sort of focus on a bit, is really the, getting back to what Frank had said earlier, um, which is the this, this incredible structure of the building and how difficult it is to explain how such a building could have experienced simultaneous catastrophic structural failure. Or well, well, two of the buildings, three of the buildings, actually. For me, the, the first and most impressive thing is uh, Building 7, uh, a building that wasn't even uh, hit by an airplane. It's only half the height of the other buildings. And it came down the same as the others did. And as Frank mentioned, the, uh, the symmetry is a question, too. The, all of the buildings came right down in their footprint. And the buildings, the higher buildings that were hit by the airplanes, you would expect uh, an airplane hits a building at one, on one side, it wouldn't come straight down, it would go over on the other side. And, uh, but then a building that's not even hit by an airplane, that does the same thing. That stretches the imagination rather much. Um, and that's, uh, there are a lot of questions that I have about the, uh, the attack, but uh, that is uh, the first one in my mind. But for, for you, Pete, um, what is the most impressive or the one thing about 9-11 that you think is uh, most important? Well, I've gone back and forth because there's so many things like Frank said. Uh, but I think to me, it's the fact that it was probably the greatest crime committed in the history of our country, maybe in the world. And uh, the amount of time that was put into investigating it by police or FBI was a fraction of the time they would have put into a solitary homicide in the city of Burlington. Uh, after two weeks, the FBI was told they're done, you know. Um, it was really left up to investigative reporters and freelance people to investigate a lot of the crime because um, they, you know, within hours they knew who did it. Um, it was just all kind of miraculous. And then um, the other thing is, you know, the amount of evidence that was destroyed, uh, same, same scenario. In a typical crime, things are saved, they're analyzed, they're kept in a box, they're kept somewhere, they're looked at over and over and over again. We have four plane crashes where there's not been one piece of one plane, I, plane ID'd for serial numbers to make sure it was the right plane. This has never happened before in the history of airplane crashes. There's been many, many airplane crashes and they always ID the plane. Um, you know, just the cleanup in Manhattan and the lack, the lack of, you know, looking at things and a lot of things like the dust were actually examined and then the evidence was just buried away and nobody ever looked at it. They knew about the microspheres of steel. Apparently it was in a report, but, you know, they didn't bother to wonder why they were there. 
So normal investigative uh, protocol, which would be followed in the in this in the most minute crime, wasn't followed in the the crime of the century. And so you got to say what's wrong here.